Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the new grant tutorial. This is the alienation of government land to effect the acquisition of the same to a new entity in the first registration of the property. Alienation is effected through a letter of allotment from NLC and the part development plan from the Department of Physical Planning. The new grant application process is initiated by a license surveyor registered on the Adsasa platform. To begin with, you log into the platform. You'll then be required to enter your Adsasa user credentials that is the identification number or the Adsasa ID and the password you used when creating your account and then click continue. You'll be provided with a one-time password code, an OTP, which will be sent to the phone number you used to register with on the platform. Once you have received the OTP, type the code onto the OTP prompt box and then click log in. You'll then be navigated to the dashboard. It's important to note that when you first log in, the account you are logged in as is your private account. For you to initiate a new grant application process, you will need to switch to your license survey account. So you do so by clicking on the profile icon and it will display a drop down menu with the professional account which has been approved for you as a licensed surveyor. Switch to your license survey account and you'll be able to proceed and initiate a new grant application. For more information on how to upgrade to a professional account, check out our YouTube video through the link featured in the video description. On the landing page, you will navigate to the survey and mapping department. There are a number of services offered here, which include new grant, subdivision, amalgamation, resurvey, and also sale of plans. The first four processes must be conducted by a licensed surveyor. However, the last process, which is the sale of plans, can be conducted by any member of the public, irrespective of whether the individual has a private account or a professional account. Our tutorial is going to be based on the new grant application, so you proceed and click on new grant. You'll be navigated to the applications page, and here there are a number of tabs provided. We have four tabs, namely pending, ongoing, approved, and rejected. All the new grant processes that you have initiated as a license surveyor will be listed among the tabs provided, depending on the levels of your applications. The pending tab is for the applications that you have initiated but have not completed. They still need some action from your side or from the parties involved in the new grant application. The ongoing tab features applications which you have completed, but it's up to the ministry side through the relevant officials to work on it. The approved tab is for applications which you have completed and have been validated by the relevant ministry officials. And the rejected tab is for applications that have been rejected by the ministry officials for one reason or another. Reasons for rejections will be communicated to the applicants. For you to initiate a new grant application as a licensed surveyor, you will click on the new application button on the top right hand corner. Upon doing so, you'll be navigated to a page with FAQs, which is the frequently asked questions related to the new grant application process. It is highly recommended that you go through all of them, and particularly the one detailing the requirements needed. An important part of the FAQ section is the sample templates. This is where you are going to find the templates of the required data or documents that we'll provide during this application. As you can see, we have the sheet corners and the computation sheet template as well. You'll need to provide the letter of allotment in PDF format. The calibration certificate is not mandatory since calibration is left purely to the surveyor. The raw data document, which should be provided in XLS, CSV, or XLSX format. Please ensure that you adhere to the required format so that you can be able to attach these documents. A raw data document is the data you export from your machine once you get back from the field. In case you use two machines, since the T2 machine does not store CSV, make sure that you attach the demonstration of placing and data as the raw data. Then there's the computation workbook, which should be submitted in XLS or XLSX format. A beacon certificate in PDF format and survey plan in PDF format. There's the survey plan polygon extensions, which is DBF, SHP, SHX, and PRJ should be available among the zip file contents. So when you export a shapefile, this extension should be contained failure to which you will not be able to submit your job. The next thing is the working diagram, which is submitted as an image in one of the following formats, that is PNG, JPG or JPEG format. It is highly recommended that you download and view the computation sheet template. This is because its appearance has been subject to change based on agreements made by the relevant authorities. You'll then be navigated to the Applications Details section. This section contains three distinct subsections where you'll be required to key in the required information. They include the survey details, 
the location details, as well as the additional details. It is important to note that it is mandatory to fill in the requirements with an asterisk sign alongside them, failure to which you will not be able to successfully submit the application. You will first be required to select the projection type. This is the projection of the area in which the parcel of land that you want to submit lies. In this case, the parcel of land we are going to submit is in Nairobi and it lies in ARC 1960-UTM Zone 37S. Please make sure you are aware of the correct projection type. Kindly note that the guidelines for transformation to UTM projection will be communicated from the Office of the Director of Survey. You'll also be required to attach the letter of allotment reference number, as well as the date which the letter of allotment was issued. You'll then move on to the location details and first select the county where the parcel is situated. In this case, the county is Nairobi, the sub-county is Kasarani, and then the locality is Nairobi area. In case you have any other location details, you can add them in the additional details section, but it's not mandatory. If you're satisfied with the details provided, go ahead and click on Next. You'll see the field notes cover details. To begin with, you're supposed to enter the date at which the field work was completed. Then there's the date of completion of instrument calibration, which as you can see, does not have an asterisk side alongside it and is therefore not a mandatory field. You then enter the FR number of the abutting parcel because we don't expect this parcel to have an FR number since it's the first survey being conducted, the new grant survey. So enter the FR number of the abutting parcel and in this case, the FR number is 233-48 and click on add and the FR number will be listed alongside the text box. If you're satisfied with the details provided, go ahead and click on next. The next section is the attach files section. This is where you'll be required to attach all the cadastral files that are required in this process. Also, please note the required file formats for the documents before uploading them. So the first document to attach is the allotment letter. To do this, you'll need to navigate to the folder that you have saved your work. You are encouraged to always save each job and all the scanned documents in one folder to ease the process of attaching the documents. In this case, we will navigate to the folder in which the allotment letter is saved in PDF format. Something to note is that the calibration certificate is not marked as mandatory. In our case, the certificate is unavailable, so we'll proceed without it. The next document you'll need to attach is the raw data that you downloaded from your machine. You'll then attach the computation workbook. You'll also attach the working diagram. And finally, you'll attach the survey polygons. In this case, the polygons you exported. It is important to note that it is to be saved as a zip file, so make sure you zip in the four file formats. You'll then attach the beacon certificate. Then there's the survey plan. Lastly, we are going to attach the field notes in either PNG, JPG or JPEG formats. However, there are instances where you need to attach several field notes. As such, you might as well zip them and upload the field notes in a zip file. So go ahead and attach the field notes in the appropriate format. If you have any additional documents which you feel will be relevant to this application, you can key in the name of the document in the text box provided. And once you start doing so, the choose file button alongside the text box will be activated and you'll be able to upload the document at your own convenience. If you're satisfied with the documents that you have submitted to facilitate this process, you can proceed and click on next. The last section is the verify details section with all the details that you have provided. So scroll through the entire page and go through the details you have provided. If satisfied, you can go ahead and click on submit. You also have the option of going back if you need to edit any information. For this case, we'll proceed and click on submit. Upon doing so, you'll be prompted to approve on whether you indeed want to submit the request and then proceed and click yes. You'll then get a confirmation message in a pop-up box to affirm that the application has been created successfully and then click on close. So after you've submitted your application, a new page will appear displaying the reference number as well as the status of the application. In this case, the status is pending. As it's featured in the FAQ section, one of the requirements needed to facilitate this application process to fruition is the checking fee or survey fee. This fee is equivalent to the square root of the area in hectares multiplied by 300 for every parcel submitted. For instance, if the parcel is 4 hectares in area, then the amount payable will be the square root of 4, which is 2, multiplied by 300. However, it should be noted that the minimum amount payable is 1,000 Kenyan shillings and the maximum amount payable is 5,000 Kenyan shillings on the computed cost. As such, based on our example, you'll be required to pay 1,000 Kenyan shillings instead of 600 Kenyan shillings. This is a fee that is paid to the ministry after the submission of the application. This payment can be made by the license surveyor executing the application process or the proprietor. As such, you'll navigate to the invoice section, click on the pay button and you'll be provided with the available methods of payment as well as the procedures to be used. Once the payment is made, 
you will click on the confirm button as is featured on the bottom left hand corner and then click on the ok button on the top. Upon doing so, the status of the payment will change from pending to complete. A key thing to note is that you will have the option of viewing the invoice, so upon clicking on view, two options will be displayed. There's the invoice and the receipt. The receipt option is not active until the checking fee or survey fee is paid. Additionally, once you click either on the invoice or the receipt, you'll also have the opportunity to download them to your local machine. So once the payment has been made, the submit request button on the top right hand corner is activated and you, the license surveyor, will now be able to submit the application. When you click on the submit request button, a pop-up notification will appear requiring you as the applicant to affirm that you want to submit the request. Click on yes and another notification will appear affirming that the application has been submitted successfully and then go ahead and click on close. Upon doing so, you'll notice that the status of the application will shift from pending to ongoing, meaning that your role as a license surveyor is accomplished and it's now up to the ministry officials involved to do their part in the process. You'll find the application in the first tab of the dashboard and when you click on view, you'll notice that the progress level of your application has advanced from the initial 17% to 25%. A key thing to note is that you can view the progress level of your application on the progress bar as is featured on the upper section of your screen upon submission of your application. As the various ministry officials involved in this process work on it, you'll be able to view the progression of your application on the progress bar up until final approval will be done and at that point, the progress level will be at 100%. Once your application has been fully approved by the ministry, you'll get a notification on your phone as a license surveyor that the new grant application that you initiated has been approved and you can now find the new survey plan through the sale of plans which is a separate application process on the Addisasa platform. If you need to view the new plan, you can log into your account and navigate to the survey and mapping services section on the main landing page of the Addisasa platform where you'll find sale of plans listed as one of the services. Click on the sale of plans option, provide the parcel numbers that you'd want to purchase the plan for and the plan will be available for purchase and download. You'll also be able to purchase both the coordinate list and the PDF plan from the system. That's it for this tutorial on how to make a new grant application on Addisasa. Feel free to give feedback on this tutorial in the comment section below. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell button alongside the subscribe button to get notifications on new videos as and when we post them. Thanks for watching and goodbye.